We are living in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia for a whole month and in this video you will see what kind of money we are spending on eating out, groceries and public transport right now in 2023. Inflation is growing all around the world, so here we will try to give you the latest updates on the situation in Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur surprised us with a variety of options. We were living in Thailand before moving here and we will also try to compare the prices and what you can get for your money. If you're new to the channel, my name is Olga and together with my husband Rene, we are exploring countries in Southeast Asia to see if we can make one of them our home. So for breakfast we are going to Bukit Bintang area, to one of the nice uh, cafe restaurants there. It is even called a breakfast spot. You can see that inside they have a really nice atmosphere and they have quite some choices of coffees, teas and also sweets, pastry. If I look at the prices for pastries, for fruit tart for example, it is uh, almost double the price from the street food. So for this price at the food court you can buy two or maybe sometimes even three portions of uh, regular meals, which most likely will be some variation of chicken with rice. We ordered two cups of tea and I ordered English breakfast, which includes a couple of uh, toasts, uh, omelette, beans, mushrooms, a piece of ham and some salad. Rene ordered a Japanese meal, it is a chicken curry with rice. And my breakfast was quite good and there were also options for a bigger breakfast which would be also almost double the price from what I paid for this and more or less the same price as uh, the Japanese curry. Rene said that this curry he liked a lot and now he is a fan of Japanese curry because he actually never tried it before and I think it's important to say that my breakfast was about 10 to 12 ringgit and the tea was 15 so the tea was more more expensive than my breakfast and for two meals and two teas this is how much we paid but we did enjoy the food in this place and we for sure would come again if we were in the area so for lunch let's try some local food and as we found out uh, here the street food is either at a dedicated place or at the food court we have a big mall right next to our apartment and we have a variety of choices there for local food and for foreign food too. I think if you're new to Asia and you never traveled here, I think it's a must try experience, uh, the local street food. But maybe if you're afraid of food poisoning or poor sanitary conditions, I would for sure recommend going to a food court. Or in Malaysia we found out there are many many small uh, local cafe restaurants that are very affordable almost uh, as the same prices as the food court maybe 50 percent more expensive also if you want coffee at our mall we have coffee starting 10 ringgit for a latte which on average i would say is a bit more expensive than in thailand and for food for lunch we will go to this uh, cafe restaurant banana bro we did not have it recommended, but every time we would walk past it in the mall, we would see that there are many, many people sitting inside and it seems to be very popular with locals. So usually that's a good sign. And uh, we must say it did not disappoint. What you do there is uh, you basically order a set, which is rice, uh, curries and some vegetables on the side. And then you can also order chicken on top. We ordered butter chicken and chicken 65. So, your expert opinion on the chicken? The chicken is one of the best I think I ate ever. Ever? Ever. So everyone who comes to Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, where should they go for chicken? To Banana Bros. <laughs> Banana bro, sponsor us next and, time. <laughs> and then take chicken 65. Here you also eat not from plates, but from banana leaves, which is an experience on itself, especially if you're like us, a foreigner who is first time in Malaysia. So for sure, banana bro became one of our favorites and we would recommend it to everyone. 
This is how much we've paid. And again, the total bill is uh, a bit higher than what you would pay on a simple food court or if you're eating on a street food market. But it's not overly expensive. It's not like an fancy restaurant. But the quality of food was quite good here. Oh yeah. I don't know. I think I cannot finish. <laughs> it is a lot. No, you have yours too. <laughs> but of course, as always, stolen food is always tastier. <laughs> You just cannot, cannot go better than the stolen food. Always taste the best. Mm -hmm. Quite often actually we are coming to eat lunch here at this mall. And they have really a variety of choices. We really like to eat Japanese food there, which is also quite affordable. I would say that more or less you pay the same money here for Japanese food as in Thailand. Western food is also available and Rene even said that he really liked the burgers there. At another fast food restaurant we tried uh, buttermilk chicken and BBQ chicken and the food did not disappoint us. I would say that on average for one person we spent about uh, 20 to 30 ringgit for a meal. And from what I know, at a street food market, you can eat as low as 7, 8, up to 10 ringgit for a meal. But in a more fancy restaurant, you'll be paying something like 40 to 60. And those are the prices for one meal for one person. We also ordered in several times. And a portion of local food would be about 20 ringgit for a person with delivery and something like this, like a rice bowl with many toppings costs about 25 to 30 ringgit. Recently for dinner we decided to check out this eastern food restaurant. We ordered pizza and a salad and because we were living in Turkey for a year we are used to pizzas being quite big. Also inexpensive but of course as much as in Turkey you cannot find cheap and good Asian food you will always be paying a lot and the quality will be mediocre at best. It is the same in Asia. Here you have really good and cheap Asian food but when it comes to more Western and Eastern food it's unfortunately quite expensive and the quality just cannot compare. So what we got in this pizza was uh, it was quite small much smaller than expected. Yet still our bill was almost 70 ringgit even though we didn't order any expensive drinks. But it is like I said, uh, whenever you travel you just have to adjust your expectations. You cannot uh, have all kinds of food in one place and it will all be cheap. Something local food is always cheaper while foreign food because the ingredients are imported will always be more expensive and because the people will be not so used to making it, it will not be the same quality. So that's just how it is and I'm sure in Kuala Lumpur you can find a really good pizza, probably really good Italian pizza, but you will probably have to pay something like 100 or 150 ringgit for it. If you're a local and you know good pizza place in the city, please let us know and also let us know how much would we pay for it. Public transport in Kuala Lumpur we found to be quite good and very affordable. As well as uh, Grab Taxi, it is also very affordable. For our month-long stay, we also needed uh, SIM cards with internet. Here uh, they had an option for unlimited internet, but we went for 8 GB each. Now let's finally check out the groceries. And if you're a foreigner who just comes here for a couple of days or maybe even a week, 
then most likely you will not even go grocery shopping. It is very easy to get a takeout, it is very inexpensive and there is a variety of restaurants. But if you're like us who is staying one month or even longer, then most likely you will be do grocery shopping. What I've learned is that if you're living in KLCC in the center, then most likely you will not find a good inexpensive grocery shop. So the one that we will be going to Mercato is on the upper range of prices. So if you will be living somewhere outside of city center, then probably you can find a grocery shop that will be 20 to 30% cheaper than what we will find here. But I would say that the variety of products is quite good. You can find almost anything that you would want. Fruits and vegetables. Overall, the best way to not break the budget is uh, to eat local food and local products. So, for example, even salt here can be quite expensive, but if you're okay using soy sauce for cooking, that will be much cheaper. So basically, if you can adjust to eating local food, local dishes, maybe even cook with that in mind, then you can be saving money. But if you still prefer to cook uh, Western food, then even shopping at the grocery might be more expensive than eating out. But, but then again, if you prefer to eat Western food when you eat out, then it won't be cheap anyway. We ourselves, we do like eat Asian style noodles, rice, soy sauce, oyster sauce. So we normally don't have problems with that. But for example, we do like chocolate and chocolate everywhere in Asia so far is quite expensive. Coffee is also not cheap here, but you can find uh, almost anything you want. Selection of teas and of course all the foreign imported teas, they are quite expensive. You can find fresh seafood and fresh meat and chicken here. Overall, our impression it's again not cheap, but again, this supermarket is also quite expensive. Our overall impression is, of course, it is cheaper to just eat out, but we still do some grocery shopping here and eat at home from time to time. Because when you are staying somewhere long term, it is nice to have a meal at home, home cooked. If we compare it to Thailand, uh, I must say that we are spending more money here on groceries and on eating out, maybe about 50% more. Our overall daily budget on eating out, ordering food and groceries for two people is about 150 ringgit. It does not include alcohol or restaurants that are above average priced. But also, we could be spending much less if we were eating only at food courts or street food stalls and had an inexpensive grocery shop nearby. We do think that overall, you get what you pay for and here in Malaysia we find it that the portions of food are on average bigger than in Thailand and you get more meat with your food. So I guess that would make it more expensive. And if you're like eating out at a nicer restaurants, either at Japanese, Korean or more Western food restaurants, then I would say that Kuala Lumpur and Bangkok and Thailand, they are quite comparable in what kind of money you will be spending in those kind of restaurants. If you want to see more of Kuala Lumpur, 
check out this video where we explored three different sides of it and I even got almost scammed at the market.